So I've served at the commission now since 1995, and I've held a ver various roles within that. And during that time, some of those roles included strategic partnerships with CMF like Michigan Cares. So I directed Michigan Cares for a couple of years. Um, and most recently, I've been the executive director now for two years. I've served uh, as the CEO for about the last two and a half years, and I served as the deputy director prior to that. So I've, I joined the staff in 1995 and served in a variety of positions. And um, it, we came a time when, at the time, Dan Walhern asked me if I would um, move from deputy director and accept the CEO position of the commission. And I was happy um, to accept that and looked forward to the opportunity to really lead this organization. So I actually grew up in Indiana, was uh, attended Catholic school, and so in, in my uh, early elementary years, and even from that day, was really involved in service learning uh, back in the day before it was even called that. And so I specifically remember in the fifth grade, I led a project where we were recycling newspapers to raise money for the local um, humane society, and we were able to donate that money and see a difference. And our we worked with our fifth grade teacher to really um, pick that issue and, and figure out how we wanted to raise money to do it. So I think way back then I started my beginning to think about how do you make a difference in the world. And then um, as I went on to college, I went to a small university in, in uh, Indiana that had a, a tremendous focus on community service. DePaul University it has tremendous service learning and, and it incorporated into the academics. And so I just continued to make a difference. And when I graduated from college, I had an opportunity to go work for the, the governor's volunteer volunteer office in the state of Indiana under Evan Bai and was mentored by a woman there named Judy McKillop and Sharon Hunt. And really, um, at that time is when the 93 Act passed to create AmeriCorps, and every state had to create a commission in order to administer those AmeriCorps funds under President Clinton. And so Michigan had a commission, and so I got to know the staff of that commission, and we really studied why they had created their commission back in 91 and its purpose, and really used that as a model for creating the Michigan or the Indiana Commission. Mission. And when we went, and so in getting to know the Michigan folks, I saw what tremendous leaders there were in this state. Um, not that Indiana didn't have great leaders, but at the time, service and volunteerism was just forming there. And I thought I could come to Michigan and really learn from some tremendous leaders like Dottie Johnson and Russ Mobby and Michelle Engler. And so I decided to join the staff and, and come to Michigan to really learn under some of the most, I think, thoughtful and, um, and successful leaders of the nonprofit and volunteerism field. Well, I think there are many individuals from my generation who want to make a difference, and, and um, the commission is a great way to do that. Although we really serve as a large funder for service and volunteerism, at the end of the day, we're seeing the impact that we're having, whether it's a public safety issue in the inner city of Detroit or an education issue in Detroit or an environmental issue in northern Michigan. Um, you know, the, the impact that we're having is tremendous, and it feel, it's a great way to, to see, um, to use your talents to make a big difference. It, like in a state like Michigan. For me, it was school and, and family and church. I mean, a combination. As I said, I my early education was sort of was, was Catholic school, and so of course service was an important component to that. And um, the schools I chose after that had strong service components. But even my family, we were always. Um, I remember my parents volunteering for every committee at school and leading the fall festival or leading some other group at church. And so, um, you know, very active and just the, created the expectation that. You know, when you've been given a lot, you're expected to give back. And, um, you know, so I was very involved in high school through the president of our student council. So always looking for ways to kind of lead and give back and help make a better environment for our school. Yeah, because I told you the story of the fifth grade and the service project, and I was the leader of that project and asked by my teacher to do that. So I think in, throughout my my schooling, I was always involved in a leadership position, serving on student council, being the class president, those kinds of things, and always felt, I guess, comfortable in that role and excited to be in that role um, in order to make a difference. Like I said, to have um, people's educations be better, to have more activities or opportunities for young people when we were in school, those kinds of things. And I found my passion in government. Um, the commission is within government, and I think there's a real role, and there's a need for real leadership in government. And so um, it will most likely remain, I'll remain in the government sector in some way, shape, or form. I have young children, um, so I have two sons, four and six, and so it's it's fun because I'm now at that stage where I'm in being asked to serve in, at their school and do a variety of things, so I look forward to those opportunities. I've also been a big sister now for about eight years, so I mentor 
I'm on my my third student, but I mentor a fourth grade boy, um, and we do lunch once a week together, and I, I mentor him because I think it's important. I also think that you shouldn't ask others to volunteer if you're not willing to do it, and leading by example is extremely important. And so, so I look for the ways in which I can be connected and volunteering and making a difference in my community on a regular basis. My staff, there's a number of young folks on, our, on my staff that I obviously um, serve as a mentor to in hopes that I'm creating the next generation of really talented leaders that can go into either the government sector or the nonprofit sector. Um, and then through AmeriCorps, I have the opportunity to interact with some of our AmeriCorps members throughout the year. And so although I don't mentor them, I would say formally, it's great to just have the opportunity to listen to their story and really encourage them to think about how they continue to make a difference. And then nationally, I'm often, um, because I've been at the commission for a number of years, I often am asked to mentor new executive directors of state commissions around the country. And so I, of course, always agree because I wouldn't be where I am today if I hadn't been mentored by some tremendous individuals. So. It's, you know, it's interesting to have those conversations with a four and a six year old about how to make a difference and to be thoughtful about how fortunate we are and that we need to make it, you know, we need to give back in some way. And so we have those conversations and we have those moments. And it's sometimes they're actually funny conversations because the reaction of a four year old when you're trying to have a serious conversation isn't always that. But, but we talk about that. We talk about um, the, how people don't have food, how people are in this times without clothing, don't know where their next meal is. And ways in which we can make a difference. And I encourage my kids to be thoughtful about how they can be helpful um, with those individuals. So I try to, to get them out for on days of service and to be part of some of the things that I'm part of so that they see the bigger picture. So we participated in the river cleanup in Lansing uh, uh, last year, and they really, they enjoyed it. They, you know, though they don't totally understand why we're doing it, they still, you know, being out there is just enough. And I think enough of those opportunities and they'll be future AmeriCorps members. And I talk about mentoring Jacob, my fourth grade lunch buddy, and, taught, and they are very interested. And so I took a picture of him and so they could see what he looks like. They're very interested about what I do with him and why. And so we have those conversations at dinner sometimes.